Hi there, Paul Turley, Principal Consultant with Pragmatic Works, and welcome to another installment of Azure Every Day. I'm sitting in a hotel room in Raleigh, North Carolina, and just putting some final touches on some training material for a Power BI uh, enterprise client that I'm working with. You know, I've always been a visual thinker, and so I use pictures to kind of explain concepts. One of the great challenges that we have with the Power BI platform is that there's so many nuances and so many different ways that it can be used. So I just wanted to show you some graphics that I've put together to train my clients on different ways that Power BI can be used, both in the mainstream and features that uh, are used to address specific use cases. This is actually a graphic that I put together and posted on my blog a couple of years ago, but uh, I often lead with this because it kind of tells the story of how Power BI is different than a lot of other industry tools. The fact of the matter is that Power BI is based on SQL Server Analysis Services, which is over 20 years old. It's very mature technology that has been reinvented a few times and modernized, but it really makes the point that Power BI is based Based on this foundation of a semantic data model that's been around for a long, long time. So it's a very durable technology. That graduated into Power Pivot for Excel in 2010. As the Power BI story continued to grow up, we saw Power View, a great data visualization tool that was created by the reporting services product team, and then Power Query and add-in for Excel. A lot of these capabilities came together in Excel as add-ins, which really was the transition of Microsoft taking BI to the masses to the business analyst user rather than just through IT channels. Finally, in 2015, Power BI was released as both a desktop tool and a cloud-based service independent from Office 365, from SharePoint, from Excel, and from other tools, which really made it a rock-solid, standalone tool, and eventually a platform that was very easy to sign up, get started, and now it's very, very capable and enterprise-ready. This graphic shows that the data model is the foundation of Power BI reports. Why is that important? Because it is all about the data model. You get the data model right and reporting becomes easy. So I use a lot of metaphors to try to explain these concepts. But when you think about the get data experience, the queries that you create in the Power Query Editor, think of them as the legs that hold up the foundation. Those are your data sources. That's how you connect to that data, and that shores up the foundation, which is based on all of these queries. After we get and acquire data, we build a data model. And again, if you get the data model right, the rest of it becomes easy, and then you can build report visuals on top of that data data model. Data modeling is not always super easy to do, especially when you have complex problems to solve. All right, finally, this is a new graphic that I've just put together. When I explain to clients what Power BI is, I start with mainstream use cases. So if we go back in time again, and we think about where Power BI came from. Years ago, we used Excel or reporting services over an analysis services data model. That's that 20-year-old technology that has matured and has been around for a long time. Then we had Power View with analysis services or Power Pivot. And now we've graduated to using Power BI report visuals with a Power BI data model. Now that Power BI data model is still based on analysis services, just as capable. In fact, a lot of the new features are going into data models created with Power BI rather than analysis services. This may be the end of the line for a lot of customers. This may provide everything that they need, but for larger solutions, we keep going. So in 2017, we saw the introduction of dedicated capacity in the Power BI service and incremental data refresh, the ability to partition data so that you don't have to refresh the entire data model every time you need to get new data. In 2018, we saw the introduction of data flows, which meant a foundation for governed data managed in the Power BI service, where business users can actually build their own entities, 
based on the common data model, which then allows us to manage all of our business entities in one place within the cloud and then integrate that with a lot of goodness within the Azure Cloud ecosystem. And finally, we're going to see certified data sets and application lifecycle management features and capabilities integrated into the Power BI service. This is still coming, but the product team is actively working on these capabilities, making Power BI an enterprise-ready governed data platform. Now, those are the mainstream use cases. Let's take a look at some features that not everyone will use or necessarily needs. So back in 2016, we saw the introduction of direct query, the ability to connect to data sources without importing and caching that data in the data model. Custom visual development. If you want to create your own custom visuals, you can do that using the custom visual toolkit. And there's lots of starting code available from Microsoft in GitHub and streaming data sets and dashboards. Sometimes we actually want to see data as it's changing. And so we have the ability to actually programmatically stream data to a Power BI dashboard so that we can see data change in real time. Application embedding allows us to embed Power BI visuals, reports, and dashboards into a custom web application uh, as part of a custom solution. In 2017, we saw the introduction of R. Likewise, we saw Python integration added in 2018. So now we have both R and Python, which allows us to perform true data science and to some degree machine learning and AI integrated into Power BI in a number of different ways. Composite models and aggregations. This is really paired with direct query and gives us the ability to uh, maintain some connections that use direct query and maintain other connections to tables that actually import data together, forming what we call composite models, where these tables can be related to each other. And then to mitigate the traditional performance issues with direct query, we can create aggregations over the top of direct query tables that actually cache aggregate result sets. Machine learning and cognitive services and other artificial intelligence capabilities are now integrated into Power BI Premium and surfaced through the common data service. There's a whole spectrum of capabilities here. And we can start with very simple black box cognitive services that provide things like text recognition, translation, face recognition, object detection, and then correlations, predictions, and other advanced AI features. And we're going to see more and more of this in the future. So that's it. Hopefully this provides a reference point for you to understand both the mainstream use cases as well as some specialized use cases in the Power BI platform as it continues to move forward at a very fast pace. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. I'm Paul Turley. Check out these resources at the end of the video.